Teacher Resources podcast. After the first two podcasts were published, I received a ton of email wanting to know specifically what I did during Writer's Workshop. Um, and this is the actual setup I use. I use a chart paper that's folded into four sections like a book. If you don't have large chart paper, don't worry about it. Use construction paper, use copy paper, use whatever you have on hand. This is just what I have available to me. Um, I do most of my writing with my students in brown or black. It's just easier to see from the back of the room. And a book. Today, um, I'm going to be discussing idioms, and I'm going to be using the book Even More Parts by Ted Arnold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model what I do with my kids. Okay, everybody, we've been talking about idioms this week, and for Writer's Workshop today, we're going to use the book Even More Parts. Remember how it's all full of idioms? Well, I wanted to go back and revisit a couple of them that were my favorites. And this page, I want all eyes on me really made me laugh because I say that a lot in class. I say eyes on me several times a day. What do you think of when you hear eyes on me? I think of when I was in school and my teachers would say that to me and I would stare at them like this. Just like you guys do to me. Isn't that funny? Now, when I say eyes on me, do I really want you to pluck your eyeballs out of your head and throw them at me? No, of course not. I want you to look at me just like you do. So that's an idiom. On this page, Ted Arnold used the idiom, I'm tongue-tied. I know I get tongue-tied quite a bit when I'm reading stories to the class. Sometimes the words get all jumbled up on my tongue. And it's like, Ooh. but does it mean that your tongue really comes out of your mouth and gets tied in knots? Of course not. That's why it's an idiom. On this page, the author used the idiom, I sang my heart out. Now, does that mean that you were singing so loud that your heart popped out of your mouth and landed on the floor? Of course not. It means you were doing your best and singing as well as you could. That's why it's an idiom. Well, this story was full of idioms, and I wanted to write a story that used idioms today. You guys know that before you write, you always think good authors always plan in their head before they plan on their paper. Well, I have a story that uses an idiom. And the idiom that I'm going to use, I'm going to put it in my plan. The idiom I'm going to use is bleed to death. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Death. What does that mean when you say you're going to bleed to death? You guys say it all the time on the playground. Are you really going to bleed to death? No, it means you're bleeding a lot and you need to get a band-aid, right? I'm going to use the idiom bleed to death in my story. And my story is going to be about when I was a kid, I got bit by a dog. So I'm going to put that in my plan, too. Bit by a dog. So here's my plan. I'm going to use the idiom bleed to death in my story. And my story is going to be about when I was bit by a dog. I'm going to start with a title. I think the title of my story is going to be Chomp Chomp. I'm going to underline it so I remember that's the title. Now where should we start? Remember what goes at the beginning of a sentence, a capital letter, right? One day when I was little, 
my dogs were eating. One day when I was little, my dogs were eating. What do we need? Oh, we need a period. I'm not sure if eating has two T's or not. I'm going to circle that. One day when I was little, my dogs were eating. I wanted to pet them. Wanted to pet them. So I did. But you know what? It turned out to be a terrible mistake because they didn't like to be pet when they were eating. And it turned around and bit me. So let's see, how would I write that? Boys and girls, you know what I just noticed? I have an error in my title. It was supposed to say chomp, chomp, and I wrote chomp, chop. What am I missing in there? Ch uh, mm, oh, I'm going to use a carrot and put that M in there. Chomp, chomp. One day when I was little, my dogs were eating. I wanted to pet them, so I did. The bait dog. The dig dog. Does that make sense? No. The big dog got mad, but there's probably a better word. Angry. Ooh, got angry. And bit me. But I'm going to use bold for bit because it was awful. It bit me. Exclamation. Shows excitement. Shows emotion. Chomp, chomp. One day when I was little, my dogs were eating. I wanted to pet them, so I did. The big dog got angry and bit me. I'm going to use an onomatopoeia now. Ouch. I thought I was going to, here's my idiom, bleed to death. I thought I was going to bleed to death. It was horrible. I'm not going to tell you what happens next. I'm going to save that for tomorrow's writer's workshop. Let's reread this one more time and make sure everything on this page is correct. Chomp, chomp. One day when I was little, my dogs were eating. I wanted to pet them, so I did. The big dog got angry and bit me. Ouch, I thought. I was going to bleed to death. It was horrible. Boys and girls, as you can see from my plan, so far I've used my idiom, bleed to death, and I started my story about being bit by a dog. Now, what I want you to do today, when you're writing your stories, is I'd like you to try to apply an idiom into your story if it fits it. If not, we'll try it tomorrow, okay? Go ahead and get your writer's workshop materials and get started. Feel free to contact me at info at elementaryteacherresources.com with any questions or comments, and I will try to apply those questions to my next podcast. Happy teaching. Bye.